Hey there YouTube, Arvinus69 here, yep, following on from the Q&A videos that I've been doing of late, we've got another one coming for you. Now, as you might have guessed, this isn't a QNA. This is my brand new UPS device. Now, it's all fair and well having a NAS box. Unfortunately, they tend not to like to be unplugged from the power source without being cleanly shut down. Now, we are getting construction work done around the area that I live in, and we have had quite a few power interruptions lately, and I have had a warning on my NAS to say that the drives were in an unhealthy state. So with that in mind, I decided, yes, it's about time to buy a UPS so I can keep my NAS box going. So the UPS I've plugged for for my QNAP TVS 951X is this APC, uh, I've got it written here, is the SMT 750IC. Now this is on the compatibility list for my NAS box, so please, when you are buying a UPS for your NAS, do ensure that it is on the list of um, supported UPSs, otherwise you're probably going to have a lot of problems. So before we get into how to connect this up to the, uh, the NAS box, let's take a closer look at this unit and have a look around it. Okay, so on the front of the UPS box, we have the power button, we have escape, return, menu up, menu down, and a nice little LCD screen. We also have an LED here that symbolizes when we're on mains power, when we're on battery power, when we have a problem, and when our battery is completely dead. Now, as I said, this is the smart UPS 750. And what I'm not showing you is on the top of the UPS, is a giant sticker with the QR code which has its serial number etc on the top. That is used to register and sign into the portal so you can get live updates when this is connected to your network. Now if we turn it around and have a look at the back. So on the back of the device we have the Ethernet connection to connect it up to the uh, cloud network. We have an old style serial port connection. We have USB, now this is what is used to connect to your NAS box and is used to monitor it. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six outlet ports one battery connection port on the back here. And then lastly is the mains power connection, fuse, and an expansion port on the back of it. Now one thing to remember is when you do connect these up, you do have to connect the battery up in here. This connects the circuit from the battery to the actual box. Without that, you don't get the battery back up. So what I'll do, I'll turn it back around, connect it up to the mains, turn it on, and we'll have a look at the uh, display on the front. Okay, so here we are. I've connected the battery up, as I said before put the mains in the back and power the unit on. So we can see we've got the display, it tells you the load at the top and what the condition of the battery is charge wise, which is 99%. If you tap the power button at the top, you go into the UPS control, so we've got off, user delay, no delay, a reboot, and a reboot, no delay, and no action. If we hit the escape button to go back, and the menu that is probably the best one, is status. So if we go into status, we can see that it's on utility um, efficiency. There's no load to it, so it can't calculate that. The same with the power, there's no draw on it at the moment. When you have got devices connected up, you will see this wattage increase. Same with the voltage, you'll see that increase when you get um, applications or NASs attached to it. There's the battery state, and there's the estimated runtime. So if you're powering your NAS down after a certain amount of time, have a look what it's at under normal load and it'll tell you here how much runtime it can support the load it's got, and then use that calculation, well, use that time to um, specify your time out or your shutdown times for your NAS accordingly. Um, we do have a configuration menu. If we go into that, we can see language English, um, green mode enabled, local power quality, you can specify whether your power is stable or not. Uh, menu type standard, I've got mine. Alarm is on for when the power goes out. Um, display auto dim and reset factory to default. Um, I'm not going to go through test and diagnostics and I'm not going to go through about uh, test and diagnostics. You can test the battery and the internals of the machine. About displays the serial number, your uh, product key, etc. Things like that. So to save me having to um, blur it all out in the camera, I'm just going to skip those menus. So that's a quick brief tour around the uh, UPS menus, etc. There isn't much to it, to be honest. Um, nine times out of ten, turn it on, get it basic set, and off it goes. So what I'll do now is I'll get my NAS box connected up, and we'll jump over to the software, and we'll have a look at how to configure the QNAP with this UPS. So before we go into the um, setting up of the UPS in the QNAP software, I'll go over the cables you do get with it. Um, I did get two of these grey cables that allow me to connect the outlet of the UPS up to the power in of the NAS. I've got one uh, USB cable. I didn't get a main cable and some software to install on a PC, which I haven't used. Now, what we've got here is the 
network cable that is connected up to the cloud port. So when you sign up for your account, um, when your UPS goes offline or anything like that, or any problems with it, you can get an email to notify you. We've got the outlet connected from one of the ports here that goes into my, uh, all the way down here and into my UPS, whoops, over there. The USB cable here goes from here and that connects up to the UPS over there as well. We've obviously connected the battery up, as I said, and that is the main inlet for the UPS. So with that out of the way, let's cut over to the software and have a look. Okay, so here we are in the front end for the QNAP TVS 951X. As you can see, after it's booted up, it detects an external device connected to the APC Smart UPS. So if we close that down, you need to go into our control panel, into external device, over to UPS, and you'll see we have USB connection, and you can specify uh, when to turn this off. Now I have been experimenting this as a UPS master. I can't get that working unfortunately, so I'll just turn that off. So what we can do here, we can specify whether we turn the NAS off after one minute, two minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. This is what I was saying to you before about checking the front of this and it'll tell you how long it reckons you can run the um, devices for under its battery. Now, I know mine says a couple of hours, so for the purpose of this, we're gonna leave it one minute so you can see it all in action, but I would normally specify about 30 minutes. And that way if we get a power blip and it comes back on after a short time, the NAS doesn't have to shut down and come back up again. It can just remain running. The other option you can have is the system will enter auto protect mode after AC power fails for X amount of minutes. As it says underneath here, the NAS will stop all running services and unmount all volumes to protect your data. When the power restores, the NAS will reboot and resume its previous state. I don't bother with that, I just have power off because we have had out power outages for nine hours before in my area with the work that's been going on, so we're gonna have mine set to 30 minutes. But like I said, we'll leave it at one for the purpose of this video. Once you've got it set, it's simply just a case, hit apply, and that is all there is to setting up the UPS on the QNAP device. So what I'll do now is I will pull the power out the back of the UPS device to simulate a power failure, and we'll see what happens. So here we go. We'll Power's out. You can hear the UPS beep there to warn us we've lost power. And now by the magic, I will do a bit of editing and cut this down to one minute and you'll see this all start to shut down. Shutting down. And there we go, the NAS has announced it's shutting down. So we'll start to see messages pop up on here shortly. And there we go, it's now starting to stop the services on the NAS box. Now it's worth bearing in mind here, depending what you have running on your NAS box, it could take anywhere from a minute up to seven minutes, 10 minutes, it could be anything. And unfortunately that will keep beeping while the power's out, you can stop it from the menus. As I was saying, it can take one to seven to 10 minutes depending on how many services it has to stop. So bear that in mind in your time calculation. So there we are. The final few processes shut down and now the NAS is starting to do its final shutdown process and everything is going down gracefully. This took a couple of minutes for my services. I don't have much running on mine, but like I said, just bear it in mind. So there we are, that is the server now being shut down and now we're safe. Our NAS has shut down in a full graceful manner. There we are. And that is all there is to setting up the UPS on the QNAP TVS 951X. Do me a favour, if you found the video useful, entertaining, interesting or anything like that, please smack the thumbs up or the thumbs down button, but please leave me a comment below and I'll do what I can to answer any questions you may have on how to configure a UPS for the QNAP TVS 951X. Also, if you can subscribe to the channel and ring the bell, it helps out immensely. Until next time, take care.